So I've been doing a lot of calculus three videos on my other channel, and one of the things that's been bothering me is that these three words, perpendicular, normal, and orthogonal, it seems like they all mean the same thing, but why do they have these three different words? So if you're just like me, who has been wondering about this, then here's the summary that I came up with. Starting with perpendicular, I will say we use this term whenever we are talking about two straight things or two flat things. So what do I mean? Well, I can have a straight line and the line means it keeps on going forever in both ends or maybe just a straight segment, meaning it has two both ends and maybe it's a ray. So one has an end, the other one keeps on going forever. Let's say this is just a line and then we can have another line that goes like this. As long as they make a 90 degree angle, then we can say that these two lines are perpendicular and we can see it very clearly. Or we can have another situation, let's say we have a flat surface. So it's just like a plane. You can just imagine it's like a whiteboard. And then let's say we have a ray or vector. If it's going like this, then we say this vector or this ray is perpendicular to this plane. So again, we can see that. So imagine the plane is like my hand and it's flat, and the factor is like this marker. We say the marker is perpendicular to my hand. So that's pretty straightforward. Next, normal. I will say this right here is when we are talking about one straight thing or one flat thing. Two one curved thing. And I think the first time that we encounter this term is in a Calc 1 class, where let's say we have a curve, let's say y is equal to x squared, and let's say we have this point. We want to find the line that's normal to this curve at this point. In that case, I will draw it for you guys. It will look something like this. So this right here is called a normal line. And you have to do something with the derivative. So one straight line to a curve. But what do I mean by this being normal though? Well, it's perpendicular, but perpendicular to what? By definition, you will have to consider line tangent to the curve at this point. If the normal line and the tangent line are perpendicular, if this red line is perpendicular to the blue line, then we say this right here is the normal line. So just like that. And you can also have a wavy surface, and then you can have a vector perpendicular to that. So that's what I mean by one straight thing to one curved thing. And you can still see it, but not as clear and straightforward as this one, in my opinion. Now, the last one, orthogonal. This is the most mathematical term compared to the other two. This is like level 1, level 2, and level 3. So, what do I mean by this? I will tell you, this right here is for two vectors or two functions. And sometimes maybe when you are in a higher level math class, you can talk about two transformations and all that good stuff, but let's just put down this and that. And you might be wondering, vectors, we can see vectors. Now you can just draw this like a ray or like an arrow. To How come? Well, check this out. Let's say we have two factors, u. Let's say we have 1, 2, 3. Okay, this is just a 3D factor, right? So going from the origin to the point, 1, 2, 3. You can see, you can draw it. What's a big deal? Yes, for this one, yes, but I'm not done yet. What if we have the fourth component, let's say 5? Ah. How do we draw a 4D factor? I don't think so. If you say you can really draw a 4D factor, I'm going to give you two more components, so let's not go there. So let's say we have this, and then I have another factor. Let's say we have 5, 1, 1, negative 2. Now I cannot draw it. How can we check if these two factors are orthogonal? Well, we have to do the math. The math for factors is we will have to compute dot product and we have to make sure this right here is equal to zero. And to do the dot product, 
First, this is the notation. You just have a dot in between. We are going to take the first entry from u, multiply with the first entry from v, so that's 1 times 5, and then we add it with the next entry times the next entry, and then so on. And have a look. This is 5 plus 2 is 7 plus 3 is 10, and then minus 10, so altogether we get 0. This is how we can make sure that these two factors are orthogonal. And if you want to say these two factors are normal, that's also pretty normal to say. People will not get mad at you, right? That's fine too. But it's just that it's more based on the math. Now, how can two functions be orthogonal? For two functions, we will have to talk about the inner product. And you might be wondering, is an inner product the same as the dot product? Yes, for factors. And for functions, let's just use the term in the product. So yeah, again, two different words, they pretty much have the same idea. So if the inner product of two functions equal to zero, then the two functions are orthogonal. So what do I mean though? The definition is, first, this is notation, f and g, and just put a parenthesis and a comma. The inner product is defined to be, ready? The integral going from A to B. So you have to define an interval as well. And inside, we just do f of x times g of x dx. This is the inner product definition. And in fact, you can see this right here is quite similar to the dot product from factors. So earlier, we went over, let's say we have u and v. Let's say we have u, u1, u2, and then let's say we have up to un, these are n entries, and then we also have v1, v2, and then up to vn. So if we do u dot v, this right here, we'll take the first entry, multiply with the first entry, and then we add it with the second entry and the second entry, right, multiplying. So we can write u with a subscript that say i times v with the same subscript. So multiplication inside, yeah? And then we will just have to add them up, which is the summation, going from i equals 1 to n. Multiplication inside, and then the summation. The integration is just the super version of the summation. So here's a quick example for you guys. I will tell you cosine x and cosine of 2x are orthogonal and I will tell you an interval, let's use negative pi to pi. And maybe some of you guys recognize this example already. Yes, this is from doing the Fourier series. So in fact, you can also do it on 0 to 2 pi, and so on. But let's just focus on negative pi to pi. And in fact, you can have any cosine mx and cosine of nx. As long as m and n are integers that are different, then this and that will be orthogonal on this interval or that interval. So to check it, we will just have to compute the inner product of cosine x and cosine of 2x. So by the definition that we saw earlier, this is the integral going from, let's do this, negative pi to pi. The first function is cosine x, and we just do a regular multiplication here with the second function, like this. And to compute this integral, we can just use an identity for that. And this will give us negative pi to pi, cosine x. And then for this, I will use 1 minus 2 sine square x identity. So that we can distribute it, we get the following. The integral going from negative pi to pi, cosine x. And then let me close that. Minus 2, let me just put it on the outside of the integration from negative pi to pi. And then cosine x times sine square x. All right, so for this one, you can just integrate it. You get sine x, and then you go from negative pi to pi, 
When you put pi in here, you get zero. When you put negative pi in here, you get zero. So the first part, you just get zero. Okay, for the next one. Here, we'll just have to do a quick u sub. Let u equal to sine x. And then du equal to the derivative that which is cosine x dx, which we happen to have that, which is very nice. So in fact, we're just trying to integrate u squared du, which will get one third u to the third power. And u is equal to sine x. So in fact, here we will just get one third and then sine to the third power x. And then from here, we go from negative pi to pi. But guess what? When you put pi in here, you get zero. When you put negative pi here, you also get zero. So negative two times this zero, very nice. And you get zero. So cosine x and cosine two x are orthogonal. And you see in this case, when we're talking about two functions, it doesn't quite make sense to say cosine x and cosine 2x are perpendicular. It also doesn't really make too much sense to say cosine x and cosine 2x, they are normal. So I think these are the difference that I can come up for you guys between these three terms. And if you have any other ideas, please leave a comment down below and let me know. That's it.